Assassin's Creed 2 game review. Miles returns, in fact, this picks up exactly where the first one left off, which I'm not going to give away for anyone who hasn't played that. Do note that this game expects you to know what happened in that game, although you won't miss that much if you haven't played that one first. Lucy returns, and I think maybe she doesn't really have her own mirror or something. She, she needs to do something about the, the, the... Her lipstick is like the level of a clown or something. It's, I'm, you know, yeah, anyway. And... Anyway, Desmond is soon in another Animus, not going to give away exactly how that happens. And he is then in a different ancestor's life. And we even get to see this ancestor's birth. Thankfully, not a first-person perspective. Thank you, Ubisoft. You are now in Italy during the Renaissance, Renaissance, however you pronounce it. And this time, it's not so much... You know, this, this one is more of a revenge story, where the first one was, you are an assassin, you are a member of this group, and you will assassinate the people you're told to. This one, pretty early on, something happens that you will want to get revenge over. And it does work pretty well. So, yeah, the main targets is, you know, for revenge. You're killing the people who had something to do with what happened. The... Maybe I should comment briefly on the, I think it's called DRM. Yes, this game requires a permanent internet connection. You cannot play it if you are not connected to the internet. And that's pretty much all that I could tell that it made of a difference, at least for me. I've heard that others have had trouble getting kicked out of it, having, you know, various kinds of problems. And obviously, if the server is ever closed, you know, if Ubisoft, you know, if they ever stop making games, and their server goes down permanently, you're not going to be able to play the game. And that does kind of suck. The basic game mechanics are refined slightly, but the game does still have its main problem of being far too streamlined. The game helps you way too much, so sometimes it helps you in the wrong direction, having you run up a building when all you really wanted to was jump over something or similar. It does do better at actually challenging you. The Basic tasks are changed. There pretty much aren't any of the, you know, main, regular, minor missions left. This does do... There were basically two things they could do. Make it actually challenging, which they do here and there, or add RPG elements. They more go for the RPG elements. You can color your outfit, you can... there are a number of weapons to collect, there are, in general, a bunch of collectibles. And you can keep playing after you've completed the game. The big... one of my main problems with it is that for all the RPG elements, basically, all you do is... you know, all the extra tasks and such, they tend to just give you more money. And money is not a problem in this game. It's very, very easy to get money. When I completed the game, I had about 300,000... I don't know... If, francs, whatever they're called. And pretty much nothing to do. Well, yes, indeed, nothing to use them for. And I did not collect all the money that I could have in this. Far from it. They really should have thought of some more stuff, or... I would have liked to see them reward stealthy approach, because you're seldom required to take a stealthy approach. It would have been nice if there had been some kind of point system for that. You know, it basically is like Grand Theft Auto again. You can go wherever you want. And unlike Grand Theft Auto, there really isn't that much incentive to keep 
playing, unless you really want the collectibles, I guess. And some of that stuff is kind of interesting. The There is still a lot of focus on the combat, perhaps more so, and the combat is still just not all that interesting. It just... The fights kind of drag out a bit. One nice thing is that it is easier to assassinate someone, there's less of a chance of being prevented from an assassination, and not only can you now use the wrist blade during combat, which by the way also does, you now have two, so you can successfully pull off double assassinations. The annoying thing is, you don't get to like target two. Sometimes it does the double assassination, sometimes not. Obviously you have to be standing in a specific way, or they have to be standing close. Bottom line, if you're lucky, you can double assassinate twice in a row, at least that's as much as I've had luck to, then you're gonna have to fight the rest of them. But yeah, you can fence with the double wrist blades, and if you get the enemy, for example, down on the ground, or get him in a position where he's more vulnerable, you can sometimes successfully assassinate someone in combat. There are also more opportunities in this. One thing, it does the Splinter Cell sequel kind of thing of having you be able to assassinate from more positions. You know, you can now, if you're climbing on the outside of a tower and there's a guard right above you on that tower, you can pull him over you and things like that. Also, you can now swim, no one else can. Be careful because you can lose allies like that have fun with making enemies drown. It's... yeah. I can be a sadist in video games sometimes. Anyway, you have a couple of new items. And let me just briefly rant about... it is really dumb that they have this... they still have just the four keys, four numerical keys for drawing your weapons. I could never make the first one work at all. You know, key number one, no, never. The second one is still just locked to the wrist blades, third one sword, fourth one fists. You have several more things now that could easily be attached to those. Why not have a cycle system so that if you press two twice, or if you play, if you press two twice, it chooses a second weapon on that, you know, hope you get what I'm saying here. Instead, it just draws the weapon. What is the point of that? If you click attack, you'll also draw the weapon. Why do you need... Yeah, anyway. You have smoke bombs, which temporarily, you know, both hide your actions and directly... I mean, they have kind of the flashbang effect, you know, it's a primitive flashbang. You have the ability to throw coins, which will distract and, you know, slow down those who chase you. Quick interjection, the chase stuff is some of the most fun. And there is... there's a primitive pistol which works really well. They hit a really good balance between it being useful and it not completely taking away. I mean, you may have heard, in the first one there was supposed to be that crossbow that you see on his back in the intro video. They removed it because it made the game way too easy. Here, they do it right. You don't have that many bullets for the pistol, you can only shoot at a certain distance, and the longer you take to aim, the greater the chance of actually hitting, so you can be prevented. There is... Poison, which I'm not entirely sure. I never really successfully used it. I don't know. That might be about what there is of extra. The dagger seems to work in a different way. I honestly really didn't find it useful at all this time. One nice thing is there are several different weapons. You can acquire a mace. Unfortunately, not the fun kind with the chain. Yes, I am a sadist when it comes to video games. Just the, you know, metal club with the spiky head. There is a hammer, which is a lot of fun to kill with. That might be more or less it. And just, you know, a couple of different versions of some of those. Especially swords. There are a lot of different versions of the swords. And let me just briefly... 
to talk about the design of the clothing this time. I get the, you know, that it kind of, the, the half cape sort of obscures part of your person, but other than that, why? It, it just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I just don't think it looks all that good. Anyway, there, the, I like the design of, you know, a glove on one hand, the other hand, no glove. That does look kind of cool. At least I think so. Maybe some will think that it looks like he just, you know, misplaced the other one and thought it looked better than both hands. Clear. Anyway. You know, the we again have the hood kind of thing, and that is a reasonably cool. Anyway, the there are a couple of new versions of guards, which is nice, because in the first one there was basically just the one type. In this one there's also the brute, which is okay, he's better at fighting or something like that. He's tougher, I think. He's got a lot of armor on it. On him. Then there is the Seeker, who literally will test hiding places if he's looking for you and you're trying to hide and you know, blend in again. And this is also kind of fun because if you, you know, click assassinate before he manages to check, you can kill him from a hiding place and then hide him in the hiding place. That's kind of cool. And then there are the Agiles, who run faster than you. They're not great fighters, but they do run faster than you. You can outrun them. If there's an Agile after you, chances are he's going to force you into a fight. You can then run again, but, you know, a, it can be a pretty good idea to try to take care of the Agiles before you make a run for it. The graphics are upgraded a bit. There's a pretty nice level of expression to the faces, although some of them, I already mentioned Lucy, she can also look a bit, you know, wide-eyed at points, and yeah. But other than that, it tends to look pretty good. All the cutscenes are in-engine. This, again, auto-saves, and it's at checkpoints, and at some points, here and there, I really wish that it, they would just, you know, go ahead and give us, you know, the ability to save on our own. You know, even if it was a limited amount of saves, even if you had, like, three saves per minor mission or something, because sometimes if you mess up near the end of a mission, you have to, you know, right before a checkpoint, you have to redo it all over again. And some of the time, that can be really irritating. Especially if you still don't know what you're supposed to do to complete that segment. You know, you're just constantly doing the same thing over and over, and then you finally get to the thing, you know, and you mess it up again, and you have to try something new. That's kind of annoying. There is a bit more freedom to when you fight using the using just your fists the basically you know it really does matter what button you press you know you can use your well if you grab them anyway you can use your head you know, headbutt them you can use your knee pressing the legs key you can throw them and you can punch them and, yeah, there's a bit more there. One thing that's kind of annoying, returning to the extra items, is that you can only, you know, you can't be standing on a ledge, for example, and use it. Why not? That makes perfect sense, at least to me, that you could throw a smoke bomb there, for example, or a knife, or something. But, you know, well, maybe you could throw knives. I didn't use them at all. Anyway. Yeah, that just kind of got annoying at times when you couldn't do that at all. You have to be on the same level or a higher level. Yeah. They, there is a reasonable variety to the 
tasks you have to do. You know, there's although you know they tend to be you know kill this person under certain circumstances or move from here to here maybe in a certain amount of time. But some of them can be pretty fun. And yes, you do get to use you know Leonardo's flying machine and there's also a point where you drive a carriage and it's pretty fun because you get to sh you have to shake off the pursuers by you know turning swiftly you know getting them off balance but you also have to be careful not to knock over the carriage that was fun so was the flying why is there so little of it in the game i really wish they would have done more with it that anyway I suppose that's about what there is to say, so hope you enjoyed it.